he has managed to kick this into the long grass, or is this just basically a slow dance with death? Uh, well, my position uh, throughout this has been that the, the time the Tory party will decide who leads it into the next election, the best time is about a year from now. Uh, you know, uh, if Boris Johnson hasn't managed to turn things round and that looks increasingly difficult, uh, then they will ruthlessly ditch him, including most of the people who are kind of passionately standing up for him now. Uh, but I do think uh, it looks like he's earned himself that year. But with cost of living crisis, you know, channel migration shambles, it doesn't look like he's got a grip of either of those. The odds are he, he, he's not going to turn it around. And then there's one other proviso, I think, uh, the party gate thing, whether it's immediately terminal for him, may all hinge on this November the 13th party that actually took place in his own flat. Now, it might have begun as a meeting with some special advisers who were also friends of, uh, of Carrie Simmons, as, as was then. Uh, and then if it did turn into a party with booze, with uh, dancing, ABBA, winner takes it all, and he knew about it and it went on. You know, potentially he's in the remit of getting a fixed penalty notice himself. I would have thought she might be in danger of it too. Uh, I think if we got to that stage and the idea of misleading the House of Commons becomes that much more compelling, uh, if it got to that, uh, then I think they might uh, pull the trap door on him before then. But otherwise, it, it makes sense for everyone to have a look at where we are uh, early 2023 to get a successor in for a honeymoon general election. So so there is a bit to play for, but at the moment there's not much sign of uh, there being enough people around Boris Johnson who are really going to focus him on the big issues that his 2019 voters put him in to sort out. I mean, it's interesting yesterday, there seemed to be a desperate scramble from the, the number 10 spin machine to push out basically red meat to red wall voters, mm. these big headlines of cutting mm. EU red tape, a billion pounds worth mm. uh, potentially to be saved. And talking about establishing free ports, he went to Tilbury Docks to talk about the benefits of those. Um, and yet it hasn't really had the effect of distracting from the party. But does it suggest that because Boris now really does need to show to everybody what the Johnson legacy is going to be, mm. he might actually knuckle down and start behaving like a prime minister with conviction? He might do, and he obviously has Michael Gove, whatever you think of him, who is a very forensic mind and, and people say the best implementer uh, in the Cabinet, in charge now of pulling the strands of levelling up together. There were announcements yesterday about, uh, you know, Wolverhampton and Sheffield getting some early investment. And perhaps Gove can can really uh, produce a kind of a feeling that that's, that agenda is being driven properly and Boris Johnson needs to drive the post Brexit uh, agenda properly. And the real touchstone issue for his 2019 voters, I think, is, is, quote, taking control of borders. Now, he claimed in his sort of triumphalist piece in one of the newspapers, the Daily Mail, I think, to have done that with Brexit. But no one who looks at what's happening in the channel could possibly think anyone could fairly say Britain's taken back control of its borders. It hasn't. Six times as many uh, crossings this January as last January. It's going in the wrong direction. The Prime Minister has never squared with the British people what his plan is to deal with that. So there's a feeling of drift and, you know, he gets involved in the issues that the person around him who he, who he listens to most likes. And last year, second half of the year, it was all net zero and, and animal rights, you know, fine. But those, that's not what uh, the core Boris Johnson electorate of 2019 wants to hear about. No, indeed. Thank you, Patrick. Well, as we try and figure out what it is that Boris does plan to do as Prime Minister, we can find out about all the things he potentially said he didn't do. Here are some of the main points from the Sue Gray report. She said some behaviour was difficult to justify and there was a serious failure to observe High standards expected. She noted failures of leadership in Number 10 and the Cabinet Office and pointed out that some staff felt unable to raise concerns. Sue Gray also said in the report, at least some of the gatherings in question represent a serious failure to observe not just the high standards expected of those working at the heart of government, but also of the standards expected of the entire British population.